For thousands of years, Shaolin monks have had these closely guarded formulas for injury prevention, treatment of injuries, and even to treat bone fractures and help people recover faster. Now these formulas and liniments are often called jiadajiu, which means fall hit wine, it's sometimes translated as. And they're fascinating in their composition. And while they've been used for all kinds of purposes related to martial arts and actual physical external medicine, they have within them a great lesson on healing with traditional Chinese medicine and how we can actually use these to live a longer and a better life. So let's jump in and go into the secret history of these Shaolin external liniments, and we'll talk about herbal healing with traditional Chinese medicine. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's get in. Now, lots of traditional martial arts either practice techniques that were physically damaging potentially to the body. Like for example, there's something called iron palm where practitioners would put bags of mung beans, then gravel, then steel shot. And they would basically do these repetitive motions like this. And what it is, is it actually will increase the toughness, the thickness of your skin. It will increase the bone density of your bones in that hand. And in some cases will disfigure the hand with calluses and discoloration. And the reason for that training is that to be hit by someone who has done iron palm training is significantly more damaging than someone who has not done that. And there are all kinds of fascinating Kung Fu history stories about a person who was hit with an iron palm strike from someone who'd been training that for 10 to 20 20 years and how incredibly damaging or even potentially damaging internal organs that could actually happen from that training. And it's based on some real scientific merit. But one aspect of the iron palm training to prevent permanent disfigurement of hands, if you don't believe me, just Google image iron palm hands, you'll see some. The prevention strategy for that is after each training session, you rub in this liniment, basically it minimizes the bruising. So the hematomas you develop from that damage you're causing to the hands. But also these are used for just casual injuries. You get punched in the eye, you get a black eye, you get kicked in the leg and you get a giant hematoma. Or for broken bones, it can actually accelerate healing. For example, check out this tiny little guy practicing iron palm training. Now, while this is probably one part true, one part maybe prepared bricks, it's a real aspect of training that can cause increased bone density in the hands to do things like this. But you have to treat it properly to prevent disfigurement. Now, some people come across these external liniments just by chance. There's a great practitioner I really love called Andrew Nugent Head. He spent decades in China living there and he talks about he found traditional Chinese medicine because he was actually hit by a taxi one day. And I'll read you his story from his website. He said that in 1989, he was hit by a taxi in China and he broke the metatarsals of his foot. Through Chinese medicine treatments alone, the injury healed remarkably fast and he was able to hike just a few weeks later. And the experience changed Andrew's life. He decided instantly he must understand this incredible medicine and he did not know that event would set the stage for a life documenting the last old doctors of Beijing. Now these external liniments are just some of the daily practices from traditional Chinese medicine that can help you live longer and live better. Now I've put together four daily healing rituals and practices you can do every day that can potentially add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. It's the first link below this video and we go into some of these practices you can get into and you can start applying in your life. So check it out. Now what's actually in some of these formulas? Let's talk about three or four of the key herbs. Now herb number one is what we call for moving blood stasis and this herb is called Danshen or Salvia. Danshen is an herb that we use typically to protect the heart in cases of cardiovascular issues that can have blood stagnation, i.e. your arteries are clogged and people are having fixed chest pain and they're in really quite dangerous state. We also use Danchen salvia for cases of blood stagnation elsewhere in the body, like menstrual pain. Typically fixed pain that is piercing, we call blood stagnation. And you see this a lot in gynecological conditions like PCOS, ovarian cysts. And so what you can often utilize is formulas that what we call move blood stagnation to improve the pain itself. Now, another category Category is what we call blood movers. And one herb we use here is called da huang or rhubarb. Now da huang is typically used primarily as a purgative for digestive problems where people are constipated. It's also used when people have high fevers and basically the purgative effect of the da huang can actually drop a person's fever when they have an acute abdomen. So if there's an acute issue, like let's say diverticulitis, you can utilize da huang to help basically purge some of that stored fecal matter when someone who's constipated and will help drop the fever very, very rapidly. But we also use it for conditions involving blood stasis. As we say, Da Huang moves the blood. So these external liniments you apply on a bruise or a joint, not only helps draw resources there for proper healing, it helps move, for example, clotting, and it also helps accelerate the rate of recovering from bruising, for example. Another category of herbs we use, for example, are Bai Shao, blood builders. So Bai Shao peony is an herb we use as a traditional what we call liver blood tonic. So for example, you may have issues with, let's say, you're exercising a lot, 
you're really working out, you're training too hard, and at night you're noticing you're getting a little bit hot. There's a famous formula we use that helps replenish that engine oil that you've depleted. But we also use high amounts of Bai Shao for abdominal pain involving gallstones, it can be stomach pains that kids have, it can be menstrual related pains, very commonly is a stomach ache formula, famous for that. So Bai Shao is an herb we use for spasmodic pain as well as blood building. And finally, one further category we use in these external liniments are analgesics. So individual herbs that are said to have a pain relieving effect, right? Sometimes we use them for like osteoarthritis, older people that have lots of aches and pains, Chuanwu in the Aconite family, or uh, Du Hua, which is something that we use often for widespread joint aches, is something that is pain relieving. So we often have blood movers, blood builders, herbs for inflammation, and herbs for pain in these external liniments. And these are also herbs we use for other internal medicine issues as well. While not all of them are used internally as well, plenty of them are used for other conditions. So within my practice, internal medicine, herbal medicine, is what I specialize in, custom compounding these formulas. And actually, I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you guys want to work with me one-to-one, -one, you can either just look at the contact info in the bio of this video. You can call my clinic there or just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. So some final thoughts on these liniments. You know, a lot of liniments are an extension of what traditional Chinese medicine views as internal medicine issues. For example, we use blood movers, not just externally for bruising. If you get a hematoma because someone cracked you in the forehead, you can apply an external liniment that will help reabsorb that bruise faster than if you didn't. But also, for example, I have a woman with fibroids and I've given that patient a formula that also contains blood movers, and in six months, her fibroid had dissolved. These concepts apply both externally as internally. And just like we can use pain relieving herbs that are external, we can also use pain relieving herbs internal for the pain of endometriosis, famously a very, very painful menstrual condition that really doesn't have a lot of options in conventional medicine, but is really effectively treated from traditional Chinese medicine. So these kinds of things of inner and external, external medicine, internal medicine, equivalents. So it all falls into the framework of how traditional Chinese medicine views certain signs and symptoms and how it treats them with traditional medicines. Now we talk a lot more about some of these healing practices you can do and also how to get a feel for where you are in terms of your health. What organ is weak? What do you have to work on? Within my introductory program called Intro to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine. It's in the bio below this video and I figured rather than me putting up a bunch of sponsored videos or products that I probably don't believe in anyway and don't actually help you, why not release my own online programs and courses that can actually help you do do this on your own and so you don't need a product. So this course we really go into the bedrock practices of why we get sick, what we can do to heal, what do you have to watch out for, what organs are the weakest for you, and what practices might help those organs really get back online and help you feeling much much better. So it's right in the bio of this video if you want to learn more. And before you guys go, I have another related video on this exact topic right up here.